The FJ775 socket has delivered some of the most legendary CPUs over its lifespan. One of these certainly was the whole Core 2 Pod series, generally considered as very iconic CPUs, and amongst one of the first to be released in the lineup was the Q6600, a CPU which at release was costing nearly $1000, a price which was quite quickly reduced to around $500. The Q6600 was a real innovation at the time of its release, most notably with the four cores that it offered, which can be explained as basically two core two duos sandwiched together. Nevertheless, it was a real success back then. But now, more than 15 years later, we have left behind quad cores, but how well does one of the pioneers of the quad core CPUs actually hold up in modern titles? Well, let's fire up some games, hoping they will actually launch, and see what the Q6600 has to offer. Before the gaming benchmarks, I tested the CPU with Cinebench R20, and the results aren't really that good in any regard, the CPU falling behind even quite weak and old quad-core CPUs, but considering that all of these CPUs are more recent than the Q6600, it's not that surprising. Now moving on to some gaming benchmarks, CSGO isn't really that newest game on the list, but still a very popular one. Here the Q6600 provides relatively decent FPS, but it should be noted that you can experience heavy stutter from time to time so not really a pleasant experience overall, and this is most probably the least demanding game in today's benchmarks. Moving on to another esports title, it seems kind of fine until you reach an outside area where there's a lot going on on screen. Then the CPU just doesn't handle the stress that it put on it, and as you can see, the FPS is far away from an enjoyable experience. <laughs> In the Mafia remake, it wasn't really a surprise that the CPU struggles, but it was kind of surprising that the FPS, although barely going into the 20s, the gameplay was surprisingly smooth for 20 FPS, and in my opinion, this one can be even considered as just about unplayable. If it had a few FPS more and a bit less of a stutter, it would be even enjoyable. In Dirt Rally 2, however, the CPU although still being a bit of a bottleneck for the 570, handles the game quite decently. Although, it's well known that Third Trailway 2 doesn't really care about your CPU, as long as the GPU is good enough, and it does show in this example really well. Of course, with a better CPU, you can expect better frame rates just by a tiny bit, maybe 5 to 10 FPS more, with a few stutters less. But overall, even with the 17-year-old Q6600, this is a decent experience. <laughs> Even in a game like The Witcher 3, where the minimal requirements aren't that high, the Q6600 doesn't really impress, especially once you enter dense forests, and the FPS does drop below 30 in many instances. It's hard to imagine that the CPU would do any better in town areas. I did try to launch the remastered version as well, but for some reason it simply kept crashing, but it is hard to believe it would do any better there as well. Far Cry New Dawn does run okay, but once again, only until you get into busy areas, where the FPS drops below 30 once again. The newest out of the series, Far Cry 6, refuses to launch, as do many other DirectX 12 games, so that's something to keep in mind. Ending the gaming benchmarks is 2018's Kingdom Come Deliverance, a really intense game on the CPU as well as the GPU. With the Q6600, it just isn't playable at all and the rain certainly doesn't help out that much. General usage can be quite decent on it, especially when you have an SSD, which helps out a lot, but even the most basic things get the CPU usage quite high, and make the CPU work quite hard. So the Core 2 Quad, as you may have expected it, was obsolete a long time ago, and the only thing that remains is the good memories from the late 2000s, from when the Core 2 Quad ruled the market. Maybe for a good retro gaming machine, this will be a decent choice, but we'll see about that in one of my future videos. Overall, the CPU is a far cry away from running anything even remotely modern relatively good. These weren't even the most recent games, as many of them refused to launch, as the Q6600 lacks very important instructions that are crucial to run new games. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel. Do not miss any of my future projects. Thanks for watching, hope to see you in my next video as well.